we will have the graduation procession starting now can we have the music please
Entering now is the pride of St. John's. Our faculty, represented by the heads of 48 departments, including the heads of departments, professors, and senior faculty in their gold sashes. Can we continue the procession music, please? The year St. John's Medical College was born, a journey which since then has been one of sacrifice, service, and success, propelled by the likes of visionaries in the hands of God. Having braced through this pandemic, we are grateful, for we have been blessed and blessed in abundance to be here today to witness the 53rd graduation ceremony of St. John's Medical College. And to continue to seek the Lord's blessings for today's proceedings, I now invite the MBBS students from the batch of 2020 to lead us in prayer with an invocation. We will work. 
worship the name of the holiest one. We will worship your excellency. We will give you the glory for things you have done. Thank you, dear students, for leading us in prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, you may now be seated. We will now have the lighting of the lamp as a symbolic gesture to formally inaugurate this program. I request our director, Reverend Dr. Paul Parataram, our dean, Dr. George D'Souza, and Associate Director College, Father Charles Davis, to escort our chief guest, Dr. Kaveri Nambison, and the president of our function today, His Excellency, Dr. Sebastian Adiantarat, to light the lamp. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all. It takes an unrelenting force of visionaries to lead an institution to excellence. And it is my privilege now to call upon one such force, our director, Reverend Dr. Paul Paratharam, to deliver the welcome address and introduce the chief guest and the president to this gathering.
Dr. Kaveri Nambishan, Chief Guest of this Convocation and College Day Function, Most Reverend Sebastian Nadeendrath, Bishop of Mandia, and the President of today's function, Dr. George D'Souza, the Dean of the Medical College, Associate Directors, Reverend Dr. Charles Davis, Reverend Father A. Sudos, Reverend Dr. John Vargis, Executive Members, Senior Officials, Heads of Departments, Faculty Members, Parents, Guardians, and Esteemed Guests, and dear graduates. Graduation day is undoubtedly the most significant day of the year for an educational institution. Today, St. John's Medical College proudly sends forth yet another batch of medical doctors, competent and committed to render quality health care with integrity and compassion, particularly to the poor and the marginalized, in keeping with the noble vision that informs the mission of this great institution. Today is indeed a day of legitimate pride for the graduates, their parents and guardians and dear ones, as well as for the faculty and staff of the medical college. In a sense, the college exists to see this day. It is therefore quite fitting that St. John's celebrates this day, the graduation day, as the college day as well. The convocation this year is very special for another reason as well. Among the graduates today are the first batch of 150 MBBS students of St. John's. So far, we had only 60 MBBS students in a batch. On this auspicious occasion, we have the privilege and honor to have with us as our chief guest, Dr. Kaveri Nambishan, an illustrious alumna of the St. John's Medical College of the batch of 1965, who has been a flag bearer of her alma mater's vision of serving the underserved, especially in the rural margins of our country. Dr. Kaveri Nambishan is a doctor and a novelist. She was born in Kodagu district of Karnataka. She graduated from St. John's Medical College with distinction and then went for higher surgical training to UK, where she obtained her fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons from London. After her higher surgical training in the UK, she has spent most of her surgical career in the rural areas of Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, and Karnataka. Her most recent assignment has been with the Tata Co Coffee Hospital in Kodagu district of Karnataka. She has served on the governing council of the Association of Rural Surgeons of India. Dr. Kaveri Nambishan is also a novelist with several children's books, essays, and I think seven adult novels to her credit. She draws inspiration from life experiences and feels that her medical profession does color her writing. Her adult novels are The Truth Almost About Bharat, The Scent of Pepper, Mango-colored fish, 
on wings of butterflies, the hills of Hungary, the story that must be told, and a town like ours. Of these, the scent of pepper, mango-colored fish, and the story that must be told were shortlisted for major literary awards. She was nominated as an international writing fellow at the University of Iowa, USA in 2007, and a visiting fellow in Karachi and Lahore in 2014, along with her hus writer husband, Vijayan Ambition. She was a writer in residence at Shanghai in 2015. Her latest nonfiction book titled A Luxury Called Health was published last month by Speaking Tiger Publications. Currently, she lives and works in Kurg, her birthplace. Dear Dr. Kaveri Nambishin, you have made the mission of your alma mater your life mission. And we are blessed to have you as the chief guest of the convocation and the college day function. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and students of St. John's, I am delighted to extend to you a warm welcome to your alma mater and this convocation function. May I call upon Dr. George D'Souza, the Dean of the Medical College, with, to welcome Dr. Kaveri Nambishin with a sapling. We are privileged to have Most Reverend Sebastian Adendarath, the Bishop of the Siro Malabar Diocese of Mandia, to preside over the graduation ceremony. Bishop Sebastian hails from Waikim, Kerala. After his schooling in his native place of Waikim, he joined the Sacred Heart Minor Seminary of the Archdiocese of Ernagulam and Angamali in 1973. In 1976, he was sent to the Papal Seminary Pune for his philosophical and theological studies. In 1983, he was ordained priest. Bishop Sebastian obtained his master's degree in theology from the Jnana Deva Vidya Pete, Pune, in 1985. His most notable assignment as a priest was as the executive director of Save a Family Scheme in Canada, where he worked for 14 years. When he returned to India in 2002, he was appointed the Auxiliary Bishop of Ernagulam Angamali. He continues his service with Seve Family Plan in his capacity as the President of Seve Family Plan in India. On 8th September 2019, he was elevated as the Bishop of Mandia since St. John's is a tri-ritual institution, it comes also within the jurisdiction of the Mandia Diocese. In that sense, Bishop Sebastian is also our local ordinary. Bishop Sebastian, most hearty welcome to St. John's and to this graduation function. May I call upon Reverend Dr. Charles Davis to welcome Bishop Sebastian with a sapling. I also welcome to this function the executives, senior officials, faculty members, staff, and students. And in a very special way, our esteemed guests, particularly the parents, superiors, relatives, and well-wishers of our graduates. Finally, it gives me immense joy 
to welcome especially the graduating students, the stars of this day, to this function. <clears throat> Dear new graduates, hearty congratulations on reaching this important milestone in your life journey. At this auspicious moment, I rejoice with you and join you in thanking God and all those who walked with you on this leg of your life journey and helped you to reach this milestone, especially your parents, superiors, teachers, and dear and near ones. As you cross this important milestone, my wish and prayer for you is that you may, as committed medical professionals, marshal the knowledge and skills that you have garnered to alleviate the suffering of fellow humans according to the sublime humanitarian ideals of the medical profession and the mission of your alma mater. We often hear the cliché that medical profession is not a career, but a calling. That it is not just a means of making a living, but it is a way of making meaning. It is not something you pursue just to promote yourself, but it is something you are called upon to do to uplift the other. Human pursuits tend to oscillate between two M's. One M stands for money. The other M stands for meaning. Money and meaning. No doubt, to lead a good life, we need both money and meaning. Financial security and the satisfaction of doing something meaningful to leave this world a better place than you found it. <coughs> Money and meaning are not in principle mutually exclusive. However, the increasing profit-oriented commercialization of health care is tempting more and more health professionals today to trade meaning for money and turn their sublime calling to serve selflessly into a mundane career for self-promotion, even at the risk of compromising the values and ideals that they have solemnly sworn to uphold while taking the Hippocratic Oath. And many today seem captive to the illusion that money alone is necessary, and that with money you can buy anything, including meaning. But money can never be a substitute for meaning. Remember, the meaning of our lives will be measured not by how much we make, but by how much we give. All of us probably have heard about the two seas in the Holy Land, the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. Both seas, they are lakes actually, are fed with flowing water from the same river, the River Jordan. Of these two seas, the Sea of Galilee is a freshwater lake, teeming with fish and all other forms of sea life. Whereas the other, the Dead Sea, is a super concentrated saltwater lake that cannot support any living organism. If both the seas are fed with fresh water, by the same river, how come 
One is fresh and life-giving, and the other is stagnant and dead. The answer is that the Sea of Galilee, the freshwater lake, has an outlet letting out water, whereas the other, the Dead Sea, has no such outlet. In other words, the Sea of Galilee receives water and gives out water continually, whereas the Dead Sea only receives water and does not give out except through evaporation. Dear graduates, like these two seas are the ways of life. Receiving and giving keep us alive and life-giving. Receiving without giving renders us stagnant and dead. Giving is an imperative of living. That is simply the law of nature. Dear graduates, I do hope and pray that you will be true to the ideals of your sublime calling and resist the temptation to trade meaning for money. Remember, meaning is not measured, not measured by how much you make, but by how much you give. Let your lives be a blessing for others, especially for the needy and the suffering. Once again, hearty congratulations and all the best for the road ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for your very warm welcome and the meaningful words of advice you had for our graduates. It is said that leaders are made. They are not born. They are made by hard effort, which is the price that we must pay to achieve any goal that is worthwhile. Our dean is a shining example of this approach as he constantly steers our faculty and students toward higher goals of excellence while setting the benchmark himself for dedication and tireless labor. It is my honor to invite our Dean of St. John's Medical College, Dr. George D'Souza, to present the annual report for the year 2021. Dr. Kaveri Nambisan, Chief Guest of the Day, Your Excellency, Most Reverend Sebastian Adhyanath, Bishop of Mandya Diocese, and president of today's function, Dr. Father pa Paul, director, St. John's National Academy of Health Sciences, associate directors, Father Jesudas, Dr. Father Charles Davis, and Dr. Father John Burgis, fellow vice deans, Dr. Anuradha, Dr. John Stephen, Dr. Mary Dias, Dr. Bobby Joseph, Dr. Tony Raj, dean of the Research Institute, Dr. Arvind Kasturi, chief of medical services, Sister Riaz, Chief of Nursing Services, Professor Reena Menon, Principal, Nursing College, faculty and dear students, welcome to our graduation for the year 21-22. Also a warm welcome to parents and guardians, staff, alumni, well-wishers, and the press, and also to all those who are joining us online. The college established in 1963 enters the 60th year and celebrates today its 53rd graduation day. On this day, allow me to present a brief report of the college for the academic year. The college since its inception has made rapid progress to be recognized as one of the best medical colleges in the state and the country. This year in the NIRF rankings, the college was ranked 13th Amongst the private medical colleges, we have been 
we have been consistently ranked amongst the top five. This while still being on the cheapest, one of the cheapest among the private medical colleges, six to be specific. The college, along with MBBS, offers postgraduate and postdoctoral courses in almost all specialties and subspecialties, 43 in all. We also offer 19 fellowship courses, including in consultative psychiatry, sports medicine, and developmental neurology. This year, we have, had, we have started a national board course in hemato-oncology. We hope to begin post-graduation in palliative medicine and medical oncology this year. We have an intake of 150 MBBS students. The management of St. John's follows an affirmative admission policy, with a third of the intake being from social and economically backward, or from amongst the religious nuns. The religious nuns are favored because of their lifetime commitment to work in parts of the country which are underserved, which is in line with the mission of the college. The students who are economically backward are supported financially if necessary. Here, I must acknowledge the unstinted and continued support of the alumni in creating scholarships. In addition, we run training fellowships for college graduates from the African continent and neighboring countries. The college is also a popular choice for electives and internship among students from India and abroad. This year, despite the pandemic, 431 Indian students and 21 foreign students did electives or trained in our college. From the very beginning, the college has paid great emphasis on academic excellence. Our results reflect this. The pass, results, the pass rates for our undergraduates this year was 85% in the MBBS, first MBBS, 87% in the second MBBS, and 89% in the final MBBS, with many getting first classes and distinction. Dr. Maheen Mundra got the seventh rank amongst undergraduates at the Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences. <laughs> the postgraduate pass rate was nearly 100%. 10 of our postgraduates obtained university ranks. Dr. Pooja in community medicine, <laughs> Dr. Lilit Anthony in ophthalmology, and Dr. Ijaz Pillai in PMR stood first. Six of our DM MCH students obtained university ranks, with Thomas Isaiah in critical care, Dr. Nalina in neonatology, and Dr. Swati in pediatric nephrology coming first. The consistently good academic results are due to the outstanding and committed faculty that the college is blessed with and the unstinted support of the management. It is no surprise that our faculty are on important academic committees in the university and the National Medical Council. Dr. Yogita, head of the Department of Anatomy, Dr. Jayakumari, Professor in Biochemistry, Dr. Savita, Associate Professor in Physiology, and Dr. Pritesh, Associate Professor in Community Medicine, are members of the Board of Studies of Rajiv Gandhi University for Undergraduates. <laughs> Dr. Sunita Lobo is the Chair of the Board of Studies for Undergraduates. <laughs> Dr. Ashok, Professor in Psychiatry, is in the Board of Studies for Postgraduate uh, Studies. Many are also on the bo board of studies of other universities. Dr. Sanjeev Lewin, professor in pediatrics. Dr. Vijay Joseph, professor in plastic surgery. Dr. Suman Rao, professor in neonatology. And Dr. John Stephen, professor in dermatology, are members of the curriculum committee of the National Medical Council in their respective specialities. Dr. Chitra Dinakar, professor in pediatrics, is a member of the Indian Association of Pediatrics Board for developing adolescent medicine in the medical curriculum. The medical education department of our college, headed by Dr. John Stephen, is the nodal center for, uh, of the National Medical Council for Medical Education for the states of Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. The department was highly commended by the Vice Chancellor and former Chair of Postgraduate Studies of the National Medical Council, Dr. Ramesh, for its contribution in co improving 
the delivery of the new MBBS curriculum in the state and the country. In addition, many of our faculty have been nominated to important state and national committees and have won recognition and awards in their field of interest. To name a few, Dr. Anurag Kurpad was nominated, nominated to the Apex Board of Administration of the DBT. He is also nominated as the Chair of the Scientific Advisory Committee of National Institute of Nutrition and Chair of the DBT Committee on Smart Proteins for India. Dr. Dennis Zaber, Professor in Pharmacology, was appointed to the ICMR Advisory Board for Clinical Trials. And Dr. Tony Raj, Dean Research Institute, was appointed to the Steering Committee for the NASCOM Center for Internet of Things and AI. Dr. Arpana Ayengar, Professor in Pediatric Nephrology, has been appointed Chair of the Clinical Research Program by the International Society of Nephrologists. Dr. Arvind Kasturi and Dr. Pritesh Kiran, Faculty in Community Medicine, were awarded the prestigious Vayo Shrestha Saman by the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, <laughs> Government of India, in recognition of their work and research in community geriatrics. Dr. Pritesh was also awarded the COVID Warrior Award by the Government of Karnataka and the COVID Warrior Award by Deccan Herald. <laughs> Dr. Johnson Pradeep, Associate Professor in Psychiatry, was awarded the ITOP Award for Psychiatry Teachers. <laughs> Dr. Nancy Angeline Tutor in Community Medicine was awarded the Mohammal Award by the Association of Occupational Health and the Hindustan Lever Award of OcuCon 22 for her work in occupational health. Dr. Kurian Zakaria, professor in PMR department, was unanimously chosen as president of the state chapter of PMR. And for the first time in the history of our college, a faculty was elected to the university senate. Dr. Malikarjan Swami, professor, of, <laughs> professor and head of orthopedics. The college has always encouraged and supported research. It was the first medical college to have a standalone research institute. The research institute this year has added a state-of-the-art immunology facility in collaboration with King's College London, led by Dr. Annapurna Vyakaran, adjunct faculty, and Dr. Mary Dias, professor in microbiology. Studies have been initiated on the immunology of COVID, tuberculosis, and flu. The research institute hosts one of the five clinical and research centers in India supported by the DBT Welcome Indian Alliance. The CRC in St. John's is created as a center of excellence in nutrition under the leadership of Dr. Anurag Kurpad, professor in physiology. The Clinical Trials Division has been awarded the ICMR Center for Clinical Trials under the leadership of Dr. Dennis. The Department of Microbiology under the leadership of Dr. Jayanti Savio, professor in microbi microbiology, has been invited to start a regional center in mycology by the ICMR. A unique initiative in the study of aging has been started. This center is a collaborative effort between the college and SCAN Research Center, founded by Mr. Ashok Suta of Happiest Minds. It will look ex exclusively at research in aging, which is timely as we begin to see an aging population in our country. You will all be glad to note that three of our faculty are listed in the world's top list of scientists by Stanford for the year 2021. 2021. Dr. Harshad from Gastroenterology, Dr. Dennis in Pharmacology, and Dr. Anurag Kurpad from Physiology. And the college was awarded the Claravit India Research Excellence Citation Award for Medical Colleges for the highest number of citations by any medical college for the year 21-22. Our students and residents are not to be left behind. Dwani Ravi and Vivek Bhatt, undergraduates, won the best paper award for their work on latent tuberculosis at the annual meeting of the Indian chapter of the American College of Chest Physicians. <laughs> Dr. Himsikar, was awarded a travel fellowship by the American College of Physicians to make an oral presentation of his work at their annual conference. <laughs> Dr. Minita Reggie, postgraduate student in community medicine, 
was awarded the best poster presentation at the 65th, 65th Annual National Conference of the Indian Public Health Association, and Dr. Kadambari N., postgraduate student in community medicine, was awarded the best oral presentation in the same conference. <laughs> Dr. Sachin, senior resident in psychiatry, won the Global Schizophrenia Award by the Schizophrenia International Research Society. He was also awarded the Menta Overseas Award by the European Federation of Psychiatry Trainee, Trainees. The college over the years developed, has developed col collaborations with many universities in India and abroad. This has helped foster research, pro uh, provide student exchanges, and also faculty exchanges. This year we have signed an MOU with the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research the University of Pittsburgh and Ajman University. Keeping in line with the vision and mission of this college to provide quality health care to the needy, the management has embarked on the following new initiatives. A geriatric center is envisaged which will care, train manpower, and do research in the elderly. It is hoped to be operational in the next 18 to 24 months. Similarly, a palliative care center has been planned. The college has taken over ComDeal, a center doing pioneering and outstanding work in early intervention for children with autism spectrum disorders. The management has also started an outreach clinic on the outskirts of the city, which will hopefully become a 100-bed hospital in the next couple of years, providing primary and secondary care in the community. This is supported by the Brigade Foundation. All these initiatives further the mission of our college. This is in addition to our commitment to train doctors and healthcare workers who can work in the underserved areas of the country. All our MBBS students commit to serve for two years in rural and underserved areas of the country. From 2008, more than two-thirds of our graduates have served in underserved areas for at least two years. Nearly a third of our alumni continue to do so even after two years. We are particularly proud of them. The college is supported by a 1,400-bedded hospital, soon to be 2,000 beds, with over 100 critical care beds. Rated as one of the best in the city and the state, it has a footfall of around 2,500 outpatients a day and 150 admissions a day. People across the country and even the neighboring countries, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh, seek medical care in our hospital. It is equipped with a state-of-the-art diagnostics, including a new 128-slice CT, 1.5 Tesla MRI, and a new cath lab. The operation th theaters have been completely refurbished, and we hope to provide diagnostics and therapeutics in nuclear medicine this year. During the pandemic, we were probably the largest provider of care for sick COVID patients outside the government sector. I must acknowledge the tireless and selfless service of our doctors, students, nurses, and staff, and the leadership of the departments of community medicine, internal medicine, emergency medicine, and critical care and nursing services. Not to forget the then Chief of Medical Services, Dr. Sanjeev Lewin. <laughs> the college is fortunate to have alumni who are actively engaged with the college. They are helped during the pandemic under the leadership of Dr. Maya Mascarenas. The president was commendable, be it in volunteering, encouraging those on the ground, or raising funds. The year has seen generous contributions from our alumni, not only during the pandemic, but in creating scholarships, improving infrastructure, and patient care. A significant contribution from the Malikal family, three of whom are alumni of this college, has helped us undertake a major renovation and expansion of our library. Our alumni continue to do us proud, be it in the medical field, outreach, research, or in the arts. Your Excellency, Most Reverend Sebastian Aden Tarat, Bishop of Mandya, thank you for joining us today and celebrating the Thanksgiving Mass for our graduate students. Thank you for inspiring our students with your homily 
and emphasizing the role of spirituality and empathy in a doctor. Uh, Dr. Kaveri, we are glad to have you today as the chief guest of our convocation. As the most well-known writer from amongst the alumni, you have chronicled life as a Johnite as well as a doctor exquisitely. More importantly, as Father Paul has already said, you have lived the mission of this institute in your lifelong service as a surgeon and doctor in rural India. Your recent book, A Luxury Called Health, a doctor's journey to the art, the science, and the trickery of medicine should be essential reading for those who want to do medicine and those who practice medicine in this country. You call for a more holistic approach to the practice of medicine, and this is timely. I'm sure you will enthuse our graduates to greater things. Dear graduates, today as you leave the portals of John's, you probably have mixed feelings of joy for having graduated, of apprehension to leave the security of the college, of uncertainty of the future. We, the faculty and management, are quite confident that you are well equipped to face the challenges to come and will be successful in what you do. A couple of things to keep in mind as you begin your professional journey. First, you need to love and enjoy what you do. As Steve Jobs rightly said, the only way to do great things is to love what you do. Two, be altruistic. For only when your work benefits others will you find happiness. And third, don't do anything that casts any aspersion on you. It takes a lifetime to achieve recognition, and it takes a few minutes to lose it. Congratulations to each one of you, and all the best. God bless. Thank you, sir. In keeping with our dean's message to our undergraduates, I'd like to quote what the legendary football forward Pele once said. Success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you're doing or learning to do. Our MBBS students are no strangers to hard work and sacrifice. It is our warm wish for you, dear graduates, today. May the love of what you do burn bright and stay with you for the rest of your journey. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now have the distribution of graduation certificates to our MBBS students. I request Dr. Shakuntala Murthy, Professor and Head of Emergency Medicine, to present the MPBS graduates to our chief guest, Dr. Kaveri Nambisan. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. A very good afternoon to everyone here. It's my privilege and honor to present the undergraduate students for the award of their uh, certificates. Uh, A. Rojit Joseph, Atman Chand, Atman Chand, Abhay Joseph. Aditya Philip, Philip Paul. Adlin Lawrence. Ajina Joseph. Akhil Jacob Cherian, Akila Ann, Alex Paul, Alex.
Alexander Sengol K. Alvina. Amita VN. Anantu VM. Ansia D'Souza. Angeline Lindsay N. Anjali Augustine. Anjali Jaisingani. Angeline Sebastian. Anjana and Mary. Ankita Angel Kispota. Anto Maria Meshak M. Anubhav Singhal. Anushka Catherine Ninama. Anusri C. Ashima K. Thrutail. Avalon Maria de Souza, B. Roshni, Ben Matthews, Binil Babichan. Brito Alinda Silvia. Chen Pen Hai Peter. He didn't tell me that. Dr. Christine Sara Saju. Dr. Kleeta Prasannan. Dr. Deepa A. Dr. Deepali Ekka. Dr. Delmi Syriac. Dr. Denny Paul. Dr. Jessica Francis. Dr. Disha Dixon. Dr. Dia Sunil. Dr. Elvis Fabian Peters. Dr. Emmadi Kirtana. Dr. Eulalia Anthony John Pereira. Dr. Faisal Firoz. Dr. Gaddam Christi Bhagya.
Dr. Gio Jude's Matthew. Dr. Glenn Vivian D'Souza. Dr. Golda K. Joy. Dr. Grace Maria Matthew. Dr. Hansa MS. Dr. Himanshu Bhugra. Dr. Himshikar Khatanyar. Dr. Jagisha Bedi. Dr. Jason Anthony Saldana. Dr. Jeffin Joy Pullen. Dr. Jeswin Manoj. Dr. Jipsa Jose. Dr. Jisho Jackson. Dr. Joel Harry Hanchinmani. Dr. Johan Cherian Thomas. Dr. Joel Tojo. Dr. Jotsna Maria Joseph. Dr. Kanti Sanjay Banakan. Dr. Karthik Murali. Dr. K. Dona Babu. Dr. Kenneth Arnold D'Souza. Dr. Kurian Binoy. Dr. Lona Mariam Sebastian. Dr. M.B. Mano Martin. Dr. Mahin Muntra. Mahin has scored overall seventh rank in third MBBS part one in the university. Dr. Maria Baby. Dr. Mark Ryan D'Souza. Dr. Melanie Mary Francis. Dr. Minu Sebastian. Dr. Michelle Ritika Kumar. Dr. Monica Jose. Dr. Mudidana Rahul. Dr. Natasha Varghese Isaac. Dr. Natasha Pillai. Dr. Neetika DiMello. Dr. Neetu Elizabeth James. Dr. Neha Zakarias. Dr. Ocean Snorita Elliott. Dr. Patricia Hu.
Dr. Paul Vincent, Dr. Praveen Gautam, Dr. Praveen Kujur, Dr. Priyanka Marion Grover, Dr. Pushpalata A. Dr. Pyari Ankita Kujur. Dr. Queenie Elizabeth Jacob. Dr. Rachel Paul. Dr. Rahul Anand. Dr. Rahul Kumar Mishra. Dr. Ranjita G.S. Dr. Reema D'Souza. Dr. Reema Supriya I. Dr. Reggie K. Jose. Dr. Renit C.M. Dr. Sagurti Sumaraghu Vani. Dr. Sailendu Singh. Dr. Samar Shashank. Dr. Sanat Nagaraja Rao. Dr. Sandra Monis. Dr. Sangeet Jose Sabu. Dr. Shonglap Masi. Dr. Sanita Thomas. Dr. Sanjana Sabu. Dr. Sanjay Kumar. Dr. Sina George E. Dr. Shahid B. Dr. Shailja Eileen Topo. Dr. Shanti Babyola J. Dr. Sean Gallen Fernandez. Dr. Shilpa Lakra. Dr. Shraddha Acharya. Dr. Shriya Sridhar. Dr. Sia Bishnoi. Dr. Sneha Maria Matthew. Dr. Sneha Bole Gauda. Dr. Sojia Peevi. Dr. Sonia D. Antoinette. Dr. Srijan Gupta. Dr. Sumita L. Dr. Swati Malik. Dr. Swati Violet Dinesh.
Dr. Tanya Teres Joy. Dr. Tanisha Gulati. Dr. Tanmay Sugnakari. Dr. Tejas S. Dr. Tanmay GS. Dr. Thompson Thomas. Dr. V. Arvind Raj. Dr. Vandana Yadav. Dr. Vishal Dayal. Dr. Vivek Bhatt. Dr. Mahindra Solanki. Dr. Navnita Vani A.G. Dr. Nikhil G.R. Dr. Balamurli Krishna N. Dr. Jyoti Soren. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, sir. I now call upon Dr. Harshad Devar Bhavi, Professor of Gastroenterology, to present the postgraduates, super specialty graduates, and PhD scholars to our president, His Excellency Dr. Sebastian Adayantarat. I would like to thank the I would like to thank the organizing committee for the opportunity to present the names of postgraduates, super specialists, as well as PhD students. Many congratulations to all of them. We start with C. Aparna Rao, MD Physiology, 2018-2021. Dr. Ruchita Chabria, MD Microbiology, also got the third rank in the university. Dr. Donna C. Philip Tarapel, MD Pathology. Dr. Cecily Deepika R., MD Pathology, 2018-2021. Dr. Ansa Suni, Doctor of Medicine Pathology, 2018-2021. Dr. S.B. Nishita, MD Medicine Pharmacology, 2018-2021. Dr. Christy Maria Manuel, MD Medicine Community Medicine. Dr. Deepika N., MD, Community Medicine. Dr. Suman Sara Varghese, who also secured the ninth rank in the university, DM, Community Medicine. Dr. Thompson C. Davis, MD, Community Medicine. Dr. Pooja S. R.S., first rank in the university and a gold medalist, MD Community Medicine. Dr. Sister Jenny Lepcha, MD General Medicine. Dr. Sister Josephine Anthony ML, MD General Medicine. Dr. Rohit G. Dodagi, MD, General Medicine.
Dr. Deepak Davis Ji, MD, General Medicine. Dr. T.G. Alphonse, MD, General Medicine. Dr. G. E. Vivian Minister, MD, General Medicine. Dr. Jerome Nelson, MD, General Medicine. Dr. Veronica Lobo, MD, General Medicine, and also the seventh rank in the university. Dr. Grishma Thomas, MD, General Medicine. Dr. Steve Babu, MS, General Surgery. Dr. Sister P. Deepa, MS, General Surgery. Dr. Grancy Vijayraj Montero, MS, General Surgery. Dr. Sister Amita Lobo, MS General Surgery. Dr. Sam Paul, MS General Surgery. Dr. Suraj Lionel Pinto, MS MD Anesthesia. Dr. Amrita Thomas, MD Anesthesia. Dr. Twinkle Johnny, MD Anesthesia. Dr. Nikhil Josi, MD Anesthesiology. Dr. Jasmine Joseph, MD Anesthesiology. Dr. Sister Tina TM, MS Obstetrics and Gynecology. Dr. Reshma D'Souza, MS Obstetrics and Gynecology. Dr. TS, Dr. Sister TS Mary Sini, MS Obstetrics and Gynecology. Dr. C. Jaya Sibol Mall, MS Obstetrics and Gynecology. Dr. Rubin C. Johnson, MS Orthopedics. Mike Jordan, MS Orthopedics. Dr. Jonathan Malcolm Chawan, MS Ophthalmology. Dr. Lynette Antonio Puno Le Parambil, first rank to the university in MS Ophthalmology. <laughs> Dr. Sister Beninja MA, Doctor of Medicine Pediatrics. <laughs> Dr. Nikit Antin D'Souza, MD Pediatrics. Dr. Sister Jinsi K.J., MD Pediatrics. Dr. Sister Teresa Marianne Jos, MD Psychiatry and the 8th rank to the university. Dr. Gali Samrat, DM, MD Psychiatry. Dr. Mariam Joseph, MD Psychiatry. Dr. Bobby Joseph, Doctor of Medicine, Radiology, Radio Diagnosis. Dr. Sister Lija K. Jose, MD Radio Diagnosis. Dr. Anshi Chako, MD Dermatology.
Dr. Sherin Dominic, MD Dermatology. Dr. Vimal John, MD Dermatology. Dr. Kaipu Banu Prakash, MS Surgery, Otonino Rangarong. Dr. Jerry Jacob, MD Emergency Medicine, and also the fifth rank in the university. Dr. Anit Catherine Charles, MD Physical Medicine Rehabilitation, and also the second rank in the university. This is. So we now head to the super specialty section. Dr. Nalina A, D DM Neonatology, and also the first rank to the Rajiv Gandhi University. <laughs> Dr. Mohan Priya, MCH Gynecological Oncology. And now we, now to the last section, and that is uh, PhD students. Dr. Amrita Mitra, who did a PhD on molecular profiling of tissues and urine in prostate cancer using proteomics and imaging mass spectrometry. <laughs> Dr. Srikala K. N., PhD in structure and functional analysis of glycated conjugates of commonly occurring hemoglobin variants in India. Dr. G. Radha, PhD in factors influencing tobacco used in school teachers and high school students to develop strategies for prevention. <laughs> Dr. Mukta Sharma, PhD in to analyze gene copy numbers, variations, and derivative chromosomes 9 in the implications in drug response in CML. And finally, Dr. Pavana Thomas, PhD in the role of RHOC in regulation of stemness in cervical cancer. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, Dr. Hashan, and thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to a very solemn part of this afternoon the administration of the oath to the medical graduates. This oath is attributed to Hippocrates, the father of medicine. Although written in antiquity in Greek, its principles are held sacred by doctors even to this day. It's a rite of passage for the physicians to uphold specific ethical standards. And to administer the oath to our medical graduates today, I call upon Dr. Ashok M.V., Professor, Department of Psychiatry. Good afternoon, all. May I now request all the new graduates to rise up. I also call upon you to cross your right hand against your chest and repeat after me. I swear in the presence of God in the presence of my family, my teachers, and my colleagues, that according to my ability and judgment, I will honor this oath and stipulation. I solemnly pledge myself to consecrate my life to the service of humanity. I will give to my teachers the respect and gratitude which is their due. I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity. The health of the patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the secrets which are confided in me. 
I will maintain by all means in my power the honor and the noble traditions of the medical profession. My colleagues will be my brothers and sisters. I will not permit considerations of religion, nationality, race, politics, or social standing to intervene between my duty and my patient. I will neither prescribe nor administer a lethal dose of medicine to any patient. Even if asked, nor counsel any such thing, nor perform any act or omission with direct intent to end a human life. I will maintain the utmost respect for every human life from conception to natural death and reject abortion as the as the deliberate taking of an innocent and precious life. I will not exploit the doctor-patient relationship for personal or sexual gains. I will abstain from sexual relationship with patients. Even under threat, I will not use my medical knowledge contrary to the loss of humanity and my own conscience. I will seek the counsel of particular skilled physicians when indicated for the benefit of my patients. I will neither treat any patient nor carry out any research on any human person without the valid informed consent of the subject or the appropriate legal protector thereof. Understanding that all research must have as its purpose the furtherance of the health of that individual. While I continue to honor this oath unviolated, May it be granted to me to enjoy life and the practice of the art and science of medicine. With the blessings of the Almighty and the support of my colleagues and society. So help me God. Graduates, you may sit down now. Thank you, Dr. Ashok. So, with that, you, the students of MBBS batch of 2016, are now officially doctors. Congratulations. Congratulations also to this entire army of graduating batch of students who braved this pandemic and whose success we admire and salute today. And what better time than this to once again remind you of the St. John's motto. Ladies and gentlemen, the spirit of every Johnite is embodied in the motto, he shall live because of me. And this is a constant reminder to our staff and students that they are God's collaborators in the care of human lives. And the same is very beautifully exemplified in our college anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly rise for the college anthem by the students of the batch of 2020. Listen in. Check, check, check. Check. Check, check, check.
to your students for that wonderful rendering. Ladies and gentlemen, you may now be seated. I request the prize winners of today to please assemble on the left wing of this auditorium. Well, it takes a leap of faith and passion to sign up for a medical school. It takes an even stronger will and dedication to excel in the chosen path. Ladies and gentlemen, St. John's acknowledges and rewards the accomplishments of various achievers in academics, research, and sports. I request our director, Reverend Dr. Paul Paratharam, to present the prizes and awards to the winners. Father Paul. We will first begin with the academic prizes for the MBBS students from the first to final years. The Dr. Indira Manorama Thomas Prize for standing first in anatomy at the first year MBBS exam of Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences held in February 2021 goes to Ms. Nia George. The Major General S.L. Bhatia Prize for standing first in physiology goes to Ms. Rosina Benning. The P. Manchunayat Nayak Memorial Award and the Dr. Kalpana Rao Memorial Prize for standing first in biochemistry both go to Ms. Anne Rose Ephraim. The Astra Ideal Award for the highest marks in a competitive exam in pharmacology is awarded to Ms. Surabhi M. Shastri. The Joseph Saldana Memorial Prize for the highest marks in the competitive exam in microbiology goes to Ms. Anchal S. Sebastian. The Bactrobrand Prize in competitive exam in dermatology for the year 2021 is awarded to Ms. Palmera Dias. The NK Apte Prize for a Competitive Exam in Autoranguologist of India goes to Mr. O'Neill Akash Biswas. The Ram Narain Dhawan Urology Award for the year 2021 is won by Ms. Irene James. The Mrs. and Mr. Gigi Kinney Prize and the P.O. and Arinda Montero Memorial Prize for the highest marks in a competitive exam in pathology, both go to Mr. Aaron Antonio. The Srimati and Sri Joji Reddy Thuma Memorial Prize for the highest marks in pharmacology, the Bishop Alphonsus Mathias Prize for microbiology, and the R.C. Nardik Memorial Prize for ophthalmology. All the three is awarded to Ms. Sonia Janet. The Paul Abrao Memorial Prize for the highest marks in forensic medicine in the university exam goes to Ms. Dhwani Ravi. The Cadilla Healthcare Prize for a competitive exam in surgery is awarded to Mr. V. Sharan Kumar. The Spirit of St. John's Undergraduate Prize in Pediatrics founded by the Batch of 1981 is won by Ms. Surabhi Agarwal. The Lakshmeshwar Nagaraj Memorial Prize for standing first in the General Surgery and University exam is awarded to Dr. Shraddha Acharya. The Martha Mary Pinto Prize for standing first in obstetrics and gynecology goes to Dr. Anjali Jaisinghani. The St. John's Medical College Hospital Silver Jubilee Bank of Baroda Prize and the Dr. Chitra Stephen Solomon Memorial Gold Medal for standing first in community medicine both go to Ms. Zaya Millen Nayak.
the Srimati Eliyamma Tanangad Memorial Prize for the university exam, the highest in ophthalmology, goes to Mr. Sachin Satish JKV. The Cardinal Gracious Ethics Prize for the highest marks in a competitive exam in ethics for the year 2021 goes to Dr. Mark Ryan D'Souza. The Matthew Olapalle Memorial Prize for the highest marks in palliative medicine for a competitive exam is awarded to Ms. Anna Sebastian. The Mrs. Anama Antony Atiparambil Prize for standing first in the university exam in general medicine, the Dr. Sylvan John Rigo Award in Pediatrics, and the Dr. Neela Pandit Memorial Undergraduate Prize in Pediatrics for a competitive exam, all are awarded to Dr. Mahin Mundra. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a word about this newly instituted Dr. Neela Pandit Memorial Undergraduate Prize. Dr. Neela Pandit, she was among the first faculty members in pediatrics at the newly inaugurated St. John's Medical College Hospital in 1977. After 22 years, in 1999, she took voluntary retirement but continued to teach pediatrics elsewhere for several more years. She was a beloved and a popular teacher and much loved by her patients for her kindness and gentleness. This award has been instituted in her memory by Dr. Neela Pandit's family and the first recipient, as we have seen, is Dr. Mahin Mundra. We now move on to the postgraduate and super speciality prices. The Dr. Reddy's Laboratories Prize for the outgoing medicine postgraduate student who scored the highest in a special prize exam for the year 2021 goes to Dr. Veronica Lobo. The Dr. Reddy's Laboratories Prize for the outgoing obstetrics and gynecology postgraduate who scored the highest in a prize exam for the year 2021 goes to Dr. Jaya Sibimol. The Mrs. Vanaja Nagendran and Mr. K.T. Shivalangaya Memorial Gold Medal for the best outgoing postgraduate student in anesthesiology is awarded to Dr. Nikhil Josi. The Dr. Arun B. Kilpadi Prize for the best outgoing postgraduate student in surgery for the year 2021 goes to Dr. Simili C.C. The Dr. R. B. Galgali Award for the best outgoing postgraduate student in psychiatry is awarded to Dr. Miriam Joseph. The Professor K. N. Sharma Prize for the best outgoing postgraduate student in physiology goes to Dr. Aparna Rao. The Dr. Sylvan John Rigo Award for standing first in the university examination in MD Pediatrics goes to Dr. Nikit Austin D'Souza. The Dr. A.K. Roy Award for standing first in the DM Neurology University exam is awarded to Dr. Tanmay Subash. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to call Ms. Zai Milan Naik on stage to receive her gold medal, please. We now move on to the awards for outstanding performance by our students and faculty in academics and research. The Dr. Fred and Domitella Saldana Memorial Prize for standing overall first at the first year MBBS University exam in 2021 goes to Ms. Surabhi M. Shastri. The 
The Mrs. Letitia Misquit Award granted to Catholic students is given to the following students who scored the highest marks in the first, second, and third year MBBS exams. For first year, it is Ms. Rosina Benny. For second year, Ms. Sonia Janet. And for the third year, Dr. Ajina Joseph. The Catholic Medical Guild of St. Luke Bombay Prize for standing overall first at the final year MBBS University exam goes to Dr. Shraddha Acharya. The Certificate of Honor for the Best Outgoing Student Academic from the graduating batch of students admitted in the year 2016 goes to Dr. Mahin Mundra again. The Reverend Dr. Percival Fernandez Award for the Best Sportsperson for the year 2021 is jointly awarded to Dr. Aditya Philip Paul and Dr. Praveen Gautam. The Archbishop Thomas Potakamuri Memorial Prize awarded to the best outgoing religious MBBS student admitted in the year 2015 goes to Sister Dr. Archana Das. The Dr. and Mrs. Menino D'Souza Award for the best all-round lady student among the batch of students admitted in the year 2014 goes to Dr. Amodini Lakshmeshwar. The Dr. and Mrs. Menino D'Souza Award for the best all-round gentleman student for the same batch goes to Dr. Clive Martin Rodriguez. The Reverend Dr. Percival Fernandez Prize for the best outgoing postgraduate student admitted in the year 2018 is awarded to Dr. Jerry Jacob from the Department of Emergency Medicine. St. John's faculty and students are blessed with an environment where research is fostered, with superb mentoring by faculty and the immense support of the management. Today, we recognize and award our student and faculty researchers. The Dr. H.J. Mehta Memorial Research Prize and the Reverend Dr. Thomas Cullum Research Prize for the best research work by an undergraduate both go to Dr. Joseph Thomas. The Research Society, Dr. Rupa Ravindranath and Family Undergraduate Research Award for the year 2021 is jointly awarded to Ms. Angela Tomi and Ms. Renu Soni for their paper titled The Association Between Screen Time, Sleep Pattern and Related Factors During the COVID-19 Lockdown Among Undergraduate Medical Students in India, a cross-sectional study. The Research Society Postgraduate Research Award for the year 2021 goes to Dr. S. Deepa from the Department of Pathology for her paper titled Quality Control in Cervical Cytopathology, a six-year single institutional study. The Dean Louis and May Montero Prize for the best research work in pre- and paraclinical departments awarded for the year 2021 goes to Dr. Manjulika Vaz, lecturer from the Division of Health and Humanities, St. John's Research Institute, for her paper titled, Public Perceptions on Controlled Human Infection Model Studies, a qualitative pilot study from South India. They say that the best teachers are those who show you where to look and don't tell you what to see.
We have a long tradition of inspiring teachers at St. John's, many of whom have played no small part in our students' outstanding successes. The graduating batch of 2016 graded their teachers for the Pioneers Award for Excellence in Teaching. Among the top five teachers, we have Dr. Nachiket Shankar from Anatomy, Dr. Sridhar Govindaraj from General Surgery, Dr. Anil Kumar from General Medicine, Dr. Yogita Ravindranath from Anatomy, And ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this year's Pioneer Award, please put your hands together for Dr. Chaitanya Balakrishnan from the Department of Medicine. The annual Biju Mercy Siju Memorial Prize is administered by the Division of Health and Humanities at St. John's. The prize has been instituted by Mr. Siju Thomas Panikar in memory of his late wife. It touches on various themes of social consciousness, such as insights and actions of individuals on matters that address societal concerns, particularly the social determinants of health. The Biju Mercy Siju Prize for Reflective Narratives for Undergraduate and Postgraduate Medical Students for the year 2021 goes to Dr. Tanmay G.S. from the graduating batch of 2016. The Biju Mercy Siju Memorial Prize for Social Consciousness for the year 2021 goes to Ms. Neha Jo. Neha, of the MBBS batch of 2019, was part of a team that mobilized 100 volunteers across Bangalore City to crowdfund around 10 lakhs, as well as source devices for online classes for youth at seven shelter homes in Bangalore. Two runners-up for this award deserve special mention. Mr. Ananda M., a security guard, who was posted at the daycare center where COVID swabs were being taken for testing. Mr. Ananda was extremely helpful to patients, going out of his way to assist them with the procedures and processes involved in COVID testing, while knowing that he himself was at risk of a virus that we knew very little about at the time. Our second runner-up is Dr. Maya Mascarenas, who is the president of the St. John's Alumni Association, she went well beyond her call of duty in mobilizing homemade snacks and food for the overworked frontline workers at St. John's and raised over a crore in funding and equipment for the hospital during the pandemic. I will now hand over the podium to Dr. Priya Paez, Vice President of the St. John's Alumni Association, to introduce to you the last and final award for this evening. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Priya, Vice President of the St. John's Medical College Alumni Association. And it is my privilege on behalf of the St. John's Medical College Alumni Association Executive Committee to introduce you all to the winner of this next award. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., of all the forms of inequalities, inequality in healthcare is the most shocking and humane. The Sister Dr. Mary Glowry Lifetime Achievement Award for Rural Service, the highest award of the St. John's Medical College Alumni Association, is awarded to those carrying out the mission of the institution to serve the underserved to the fullest extent. From amongst many who fulfill the mission of the institution, we are proud to announce this year's recipient of the award, Sister Dr. Equinus Ediseri, Batch of 1975, belonging to the Order of the Sisters of the Holy Cross, Menzingen. Sister Dr. Equinus was unable to be with us this afternoon in person to receive the award. We invite her provincial superior, Sister Shiny Jose, to please join us on stage to receive the award on her behalf.
while I read out the citation. Sister Dr. Aquinas Ediseri joined St. John's Medical College in 1975, completing her MBBS followed by her MD in Internal Medicine. Soon she began working among the underserved in Koligal, near the BR Hills at the border of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. She provided medical care in this region and participated in many social initiatives to improve the lives of the exploited in rural Karnataka. After years of service, at an age when many would consider retiring, she took up the most challenging task of her life, choosing to work with tribal Adivasi people living in the forests of Kalahandi, one of the most backward regions of Odisha. Here she identified a real need for service with extremely high mortality rates due to malnutrition, malaria, and the lack of basic obstetric care. In 2014, with the support of St. John's and other philanthropic organizations, she established the NGO Swasthya Swaraj in the town of Bhawani Patna in Odisha, a secular, non-profit organization. She envisioned a people's movement for Swaraj in health, a just and equitable society free from the shackles of ill health, illiteracy, and poverty. Swastya Swaraj has trained tribal men and women to recognize disease early, seek medical intervention, and has imparted a sense of empowerment in the community. Sister Dr. Aquinas's greatness lies in her faithfulness to her vocation as a doctor for the poor. She has faced countless challenges, but has used her talents to bring God's healing touch to the sick and the suffering. The Alumni Association of St. John's Medical College lords her truly motivating life and work and bestows on her the highest award of the association for dedicated service to the underserved and needy in the spirit of Christ and in keeping with the mission of her alma mater. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Sister Dr. Aquinas. May I request... Father Paul, to please present the felicitation shawl to Sister Chaini, and Dr. Kaveri Nambisan, our chief guest, to present the commemorative plaque. I invite Dr. Tony, the treasurer of the Alumni Association, to join me in giving Sister Chaini the citation. Thank you, Dr. Priya. We are honored today to have one of our own illustrious alumni on stage, an accomplished surgeon and writer as our esteemed chief guest. It is my proud privilege to invite Dr. Kaveri Nambisan to deliver this year's graduation day address. Dignitaries on the dais, respected members of the faculty, young doctors, all the other doctors, staff, and parents. The pleasure I get in being here today is, uh, is very difficult to express. I, have, uh, I'm, I'm, I feel I've been given this privilege to be at the graduation ceremony for undergraduates and postgraduates of uh, St. John's Medical College, which I have always uh, referred to as my medical college. Many decades ago, I joined here as an eager medical student, foolishly unaware of the fact that my entire life would be modified by the profession I was stepping into. Many of you would have decided exactly what you want to do now, after your graduation or post-graduation. 
perhaps some of you are mildly confused or undecided about the future. These anxieties that one faces at the beginning of a medical career are, arise from cultural, financial, academic, and emotional factors, and they might threaten one's aspirations. For young women, there is perhaps also the pressure of impending marriage at a time when testing the waters of a career itself is a huge moment. There is so much that is laudatory about our line of work. We receive high praise, and most of it is well deserved. At times, though, it feels like too much of polishing the apple might not be a great idea, especially if the apple is not perfect all the way down to its core. Some of our very human qualities come in the way of achieving a degree of perfection. This, I say, after several decades as a doctor. I know there are lacunae in my knowledge, there are deficiencies, and there is conceit which refuses to accept those deficiencies. But that should not stop me from aspiring for excellence. I belong to a generation that was born soon after independence. It was a time of great promise and self-belief for all of us Indians. While India was still a poor and underdeveloped country ridden by caste and communal prejudices, we were confident of living up to the ideals of a truly democratic nation. Our accomplishments as the world's largest democracy far outweigh our failures. We have had seven decades of independence. I think there is an essential difference between this decade in which we now live and the decades that preceded it. Our aspirations, the hunger for achievement, for money, comforts, pleasures, our need to be loved, our necessities like shelter, food, and clothing have all remained the same. So what has changed? It is the realization that whatever happens in any part of the world will sooner or later affect all of us. This awareness of our complicity in everything that happens to the world is new. We need that awareness, because only then can we begin to understand our responsibilities in the complete sense. What does the world look like at this moment, in spite of the many achievements and progress that I do not have to mention? There is still extreme hunger, poverty, conflicts, assassinations, sanctions, religious extremism, totalitarian governments which suffocate freedom, cold wars, not so cold wars, climate change. My goodness, that's a big list. I list them only to call your attention to the one crucial fact that we are in it together. We have to reach out to a world that is fractious, wounded, and bleeding from all sides. Forget that, and humankind will splinter into insignificance and extinction. My advice to young doctors, if I may give a little bit of advice, is as follows. Find a mentor. It may be a senior in college, 
a faculty member, or someone outside the medical profession. Not many of us find one mentor who meets our needs. But keep looking, and you will find one or more who can offer you guidance and advice. Or they can show you by example. Think for yourself. We are often told this. How to think for oneself? We are all unique individuals with our brains and neuronal pathways wired in a specific way. So our behavior is specific and has much to do with our identities. For instance, I identify myself as a woman, a, as a doctor, a writer, a wife and a mother, a senior citizen, an Indian citizen, a Hindu. Note that I have put religion at the end. To work within our identities seems a sensible thing to do, but it is essential to also project yourself within your from within your identity to the outside world and to see how best your life can operate in relation to the rest of the world. Remember Claude Bernard's milieu interior, the meaning of coexistence. Mutual coexistence is an oft used word with a powerful meaning. Your life becomes more meaningful when you live it without harming any other being and by resisting the forces that will harm either you or anyone else. Why am I saying all this to young medical graduates eager to enter your professions? Because I believe that it is our duty, our obligation to life. So do not stop learning, but take a step back every now and then, and look at where you are heading and why. Do not be afraid with, and do not be satisfied with personal success as the end all of a medical career. Ours is one of the most cherished professions because every moment of every working day of our lives we have the chance of alleviating the suffering of a fellow human. When you choose your particular branch of medicine, do so in a manner which makes optimum use of your unique talents and aptitudes. Also check where the need lies. We need specialists, we need super specialists, we need research-oriented doctors. We need more teachers. We need those who will take up community medicine. We need, we need those willing to work in the periphery, away from the cities. We need doctors who will address the needs of the millions who live in our slums. So while you plan your careers and strive to fulfill as, your aspirations, you should, you must, take a position of responsibility. Doctors are a small minority of perhaps uh, uh, six lakh in a country of 1,400 million people. But we are a strong minority. We have a voice that will be heard, should we choose to use it. We have many wrongs within our system and we need you, the younger generation of doctors, with fine minds to address them. Do not allow vacuous sentiments, like a false sense of superiority over anyone else, to overtake you. Feeling of superiority is only fit for dull, tired minds. That must always not only try to be superior, but also 
try to put blame on others for everything that goes wrong. Be kind to yourself. Always retain your, retain your sense of humor. It will stop you from ever getting pompous, self-important, or self-righteous. I wish you all good health, good sense, good humor, and good challenges. Remember, you cannot achieve happiness by chasing after it. Happiness is the byproduct, the outcome of your authenticity and integrity. Nearly a hundred years ago, Rabindranath Tagore wrote these lines, which I will quote. I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I woke and found that life was duty. I worked and found that work was joy. May you all find joy in what you do. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am, for that meaningful address. Before we move on to the next part of the program, uh, there's a small announcement. Can the owner of the vehicle with the registration plate KA51MP8324, KA51MP8324, please go outside and move your vehicle because it has blocked the parking lot and uh, created a traffic jam. Thank you. I now request His Excellency, most Reverend Dr. Sebastian Adeyantarath to deliver the presidential address. Dr. Kaveri Nambisin, Dr. Paul Parathadam, Dr. George D. Sousa, all the doctors and my dear friends. I feel a bit nervous to talk to you because uh, it has been a long day. You have been anxious and excited and you have been sitting for a long time. And secondly, Dr. Kaveri stole all what I had to say. But however, I need to talk to you because if I don't talk to you, Father Paul will not be invite me back. And more serious than that, three of your doctors are coming to our mission in Mandia. I am afraid they will be withdrawn. So bear with me as I talk to you. I am so glad that uh, the management had invited Dr. Kaveri to be the guest of honor for this evening. That tells us that you can be an excellent doctor and also be a storyteller. We all are storytellers and I hope uh, he entered her a speech saying that be men and women of humor. And if you are losing the humor, you know, approach the nearest psychiatric hospital. You need help. So what she was telling you is to take life lightly. And uh, I thought uh, what I should tell you, you know, as a priest, we pray over that matter. And what came to my mind, as a small boy in an agricultural setting, the Carmelite nuns in our village taught us about the Ten Commandments. They are beautiful and I remember them. I thought I'll share with you, not long, ten small tips. For you, they are not that elegant or profound, you know. You know why? You are not Moses and I'm not God. What's the first one? I think Dr. Kaveri shared with you, today you are fulfilling one of your dreams in life. I should tell you, be proud of your ministry. But be humble in all your dealings with the people, especially the poor or the uneducated, or what do you call in quote-unquote, the rural folks. 
they are the heart of india number 2 i should tell you you should read continue to read and learn your ministry is a fast growing service industry there is lot of new learning and new experiments they are coming out every day instead of wasting time on frivolous things focus on how better you can serve your constituency your people with a better knowledge and thirdly there is a beautiful saying in english act as if you cannot afford to buy two pieces of bread until they know you own the bakery this is a usage in english you know what i mean be patient in listening to people as soon as a patient walks in with two words from him or her you may know the solution but better listen to them they came to share with you an affliction you may know the solution you own it and you are wonderful people you know as many of you walked and received the awards you know i begin to understand how smart you are and how capable you are and how well you can contribute to the society but be patient in listening number 4 dr kaveri mentioned about it look out for hospitals who offer you a better service rather than which seeks status money or name you know why please do understand when there is a tremendous growth in a hospital or in any institution in or in a mall it is built on the sweat and blood of people who are not properly paid and the management will give you flimsy reasons for not paying so it is good for you to look for hospitals you know where you can offer service where you can keep your integrity do not compromise your values number 5 be respectful to everywhere you go especially in a hospital those who clean the floors do the janitorial services those who make our toilets shine like anything those who are attendants those who are standing near the gate welcoming people and when you respect them as a doctor you increase their self esteem and not only that you can take um, sure of these words when the management fails to support you on a thorny issue they will stand by you because you believed in them number 6 be in touch with the common person so that you will continue to keep your humanity they will continuously teach you what life is kindly do the shopping from time to time with the street vendors and talk to them kindly purchase your garments or clothes from a medium size textile shop and once in a while go to a pharmacy to get your medication and they, they are the biggest teachers of life be in touch with the real life and you will become a real doctor number 7 father paul mentioned about it but i like to reemphasize this point one more time for you kindly search for meaning in suffering you know why one of the great persons in history victor franklin shared human person human person that comes across to you is willing to undertake any amount of suffering if only he or she understands there is a meaning in it only an ultimate reality can explain or furnish a meaning in human suffering be in touch with that reality and i know very well many of you are as the stark naked 
ugly face of suffering stares at you through the groans and aches and pains of your patients. Number eight, please do understand that success and failures are the two, si two uh, sides of the same coin. When the success comes, embrace it joyfully, knowing that fully well, it will be followed by bitter moments of failure. As Saint Teresa of Avila once said beautifully well, this too will pass. That time also will pass. And this was said even before Saint Teresa of Avila by King Akbar in India. It had written on the walls of his palace. So it's an ancient wisdom that you will pass. Don't be afraid. So you're able to embrace success and enjoy. And at the same time, when the failure comes on your way, you know very well, after a good sleep, after a nice moment of remembering, or you know, having a good cup of tea, this too will pass. Number nine, if you want fulfillment in your ministry, I would call your service as a ministry, be close to the poor, the distressed, those who are not able to pay for your services. And there is a reason for that. You now, in the families or wherever you go, you see the tap, and you open the tap, and the water comes. And the children believe the magic of water coming is the tap. You can make the tap of gold, silver, or diamond, but the water won't come. The magic is the pump. And who are the pumps in this world? It is the poor, the distressed, the sick, the abandoned are the pumps of this world through whom God roots the beautiful virtue called fulfillment. Be in touch with the pump. And finally, please do understand Ultimately, you are alone in this world. You may have a beautiful wife, an excellent husband, or a trustworthy management. But in the game of life, you are all alone. Think about a goalkeeper in a football game. There may be around 60,000 people cheering for this man. But you know what? When the ball hits the goalpost, you have to take the heat alone. It is not a sad note, but a reality. Be prepared for that reality. I am alone in this world. We come to this world alone. You often walk alone. You know, if you follow the route, Dr. Kaveri was telling you, you walk alone. And finally, you return home alone. But there is someone called God who journeys with you. It was such a joy for me to be with you. I wish you all the best in your life. Be a happy person. And have a wonderful smile on your face as the people come to see you. We all get exhausted. And we all get tired. And more than that, sometimes we may get preoccupied. But the person who comes to you is the God who comes to meet you. Thank you, and God bless you. I have one more small pleasant thing to do. Uh, it is, uh, it's not a long one. Thank you, Father, for your words of wisdom to this graduating batch of students. Um, after years of wait and deliberation, uh, we are pleased to officially launch the new website of St. John's National Academy of Health Sciences, this as a part of our Digital Transformation Initiative. This website has been developed by Integro Infotech, and uh, in addition to all that a website is meant to serve the goal of goals of an institution, this 
website is also used to create awareness amongst those wishing to engage with St. John's. And now I invite His Excellency, Most Reverend Dr. Sebastian Adyantrit, to symbolically inaugurate the website. Congratulations. I hereby declare the launch of the new website of St. John's National Academy of Health Sciences. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Well, students, it's your turn to give the response. And to give the response on behalf of the graduating batch of 2016, I call upon Mark Ryan, sorry, Dr. Mark Ryan D'Souza. Does it really make a difference, Mark? I mean, by no stretch of imagination, one would expect that after spending more than half a decade of your life in a medical school, and especially St. John's Medical School, and on this day, graduation day, the 53rd graduation day, that there was a possibility that you may have graduated as an engineer, Mark? Well, your doctor, Mark. Dr. Mark, over to you. Can we have your response, please? It never ceases to amaze me how sometimes the most ordinary of soils sprout out the most extraordinary fruit when they are planted with the right seeds. Seemingly so, the 22nd of September 2016 was like any other ordinary run-of-the-mill Bangalore days. The Kuramangla traffic outside raged on, as did the chill monsoon breeze. But it was from this very kindling of common that, in, that uh, emerged embers of the extraordinary. It was on this day that history took place in these very halls, when this illustrious institution, we now call our home, opened its hallowed portals to 150 eager medical aspirants, 150 individuals that would inspire a new beginning to Johnite lore, 150 knights that charged at every challenge, even conquering the COVID-19 pandemic amidst our final year, 150 twice-ordained COVID warrior interns, and 150 sparkling souls. I've had the privilege of calling my batch of 2016. <laughs> Greetings to the gathering, to our chief guest, the inspiring Dr. Kaveri Nambisam, His Excellency, the Most Reverend Sebastian Edian the uh, Bishop of Mandya, our Director, Reverend Father Paul Paratalam, our Associate Directors, our Dean, Dr. George D'Souza, our vice deans, the dignitaries both on and off the dais, our faculty, both teaching and non-teaching, our dear loved ones, our parents, siblings, friends, and of course, my fellow graduates. It is indeed an honor to deliver these remarks, a privilege for which ample words simply do not exist. And uh, given the paucity of time and my penchant for giving long speeches, perhaps that's for the better. Admittedly, encapsulating the enormity of this journey we've shared has proven quite the ordeal. But upon further reflection, I realized that this journey, it's one that we relive day in and out throughout the course of our internship. So for perhaps one last time, I invite you, all my fellow graduates, parents, to join me down this trip down a not so distant memory lane as we venture into a day in the life of an intern. There exists a glaring distance in this, uh, difference in the start of an intern's day. While those in minor postings emerge from their slumber beaming, the only concern being, when should I punch in? Medicine interns are summoned into consciousness with frantic, call, frantic calls of code blue, only to realize that those calls were merely a drill. And labor room interns are invigorated into wakefulness by empowering incantations and charismatic chants, beckoning those weary mothers to bear down. This sheer contrast, then, reminds the intern of those pre-exam study sessions, where hours of sleep was directly proportional to level of preparedness. Toppers would assert, that they've read, the body needs adequate rest to recall, and confidently drift away. Having missed that fact during their study sessions, 
the slightly less prepared would flock together with coffee mugs in one hand, solve singies in the other, and brace themselves for another all-nighter. But it was in hostel rooms at the most untimely hours of dawn that legends would arise with the confidence that that question was not RS3 and therefore no, no, not need for passing. Armored in scrubs and N95 masks, the interns storm into the battlefield wielding stets as their weapons in one hand and ID cards in the other. Entering the hospital's tremendous portals, the intern is immediately te teleported back to those mask maskless days of yesteryear when, as neatly polished second years with radiant white coats, we dared enter the hospital for the very first time in pursuit of answers to numerous questions that then confounded us, like name some pulmonary causes of jaundice. Answers we still honestly remain oblivious to, but for which we've grown in our adeptness to seeking answers for on uh, apps like UpToDate. Gasping for breath beneath those uh, suffocating mask fabrics, the intern is reminded of those two ruth ruthless waves of COVID we braved, where clad in PPE, we found ourselves in the epicenter of the pandemic. Drawn then to the wards by their sense of responsibility and urgency to secure echo slots, the intern begins his pre runs diligently recording and verifying and re-verifying all the uh, vitals of all the unit's admissions as the patient unbuttons his shirt. The cold morning breeze sends shivers down all male intern spines as they reminisce of those physiology days where the bearing of chest was a curse we bore. Armed then with an immense arsenal of clinical knowledge acquired through five years of grinding and carrying an equally impressive collection of lab forms we've acquired through what seemed like five years of fighting with staff executives, the intern then proceeds to lead, lead rounds, fixing scans and bargaining with, ICU, with ICUs in pursuit of beds. It is at this point the intern encounters their most formidable nemesis, the blood bank. Harnessing that eloquence that witnessed them emerge triumphant in myriad literary and academic competitions alike, the intern weaves passionate, multilingual arguments, courtesy of our exquisite Kannada classes and even more elaborate dissection table Malayalam sessions, vying for that ultimate prize, one pint PRVC. Orders written and re requisitions raised, and most importantly, discharge summaries delivered, our rounds per session takes us to the heart of the hospital, the first floor coffee shop. As the richness of coffee streams down the intern's digestive tracts, memories gush in as we recall when, as miniature me medicos, in first year we dared venture into the hospital in pursuit of those f this famed beverage stall. When as second years and third years, we enjoyed mugs of our favorite beverages before well, being already late for clinics. Whereas final years, we stocked up on fl uh, our flasks of coffee to brace ourselves for the long nights ahead and whereas interns now it served as our common meeting place for interns across all streams. Caffeined up and our cups disposed, the interns return to the wards where in medicine we encounter patients whose woeful recountments as to the origin of their diarrhea reminds the intern of those numerous courses of gastroenteritis they themselves have been served alongside many a meal in the joint mess and dietary. Our colleagues in orthopedics, over, well, they would occupy their time correcting deformities and applying slabs. And in the midst of the surrounding sea of RTAs, we reminisce about the Madiwala Road, where we too may have met such similar fate. Meanwhile, interns in ENT inspect their patients' tonsils, where requests to stick out their tongues would produce guttural notes, a reminder of those jingle rock practices atop the Robert Koch Bhavan says, where choirs would moan and conductors would groan. Indeed, internship has taught us to find the humor in the most dire of circumstances, while never losing sight of the, the core principle of empathy. Now, there certainly is no shortage of medical literature, and while textbooks enshrine the knowledge that we require as medical professionals, the lessons I've learned from all of you, my batchmates in 2016, go far beyond the covers of any journal. In first year, the dissection halls of anatomy unveiled the mysteries of the human body, whereas physiology unraveled its mechanics. O16, on the other hand, presented us with medical marvels, like batchmates who could alter BMIs in the span of days and lean individuals who would oust even the heftiest of seniors in athletic fields. The pungent aromas of the, uh, the decoctions we brewed in biochem cautioned us that not all chemicals react well together, as did numerous exothermic couplings in our batch. As second years, pharmacology educated us on treatments of choice, but it was in D-block corridors and hostel rooms where we discovered therapy unparalleled in the camaraderie we shared. In pathology and microbiology, 
we witnessed that everything could go wrong. And while OS 16 also showed us this on many an occasion, it was that perseverance we championed in even the most hopeless of circumstances that it will remind us forever to never give up. Forensic thoughters of IPCs and uh, medical laws, while legislatures of our batch um, uh, amended those age-old rules of St. John's and concocted a doctrine we continue to live by as Johnites. Claudia presented us with ENT and ophthalmology, where we learned of neural processes that comprise the most vital sensations. Inspired, our batch introduced a new wave of musical, theatrical, and dance sensations, all from the convenience of our UNESCO-certified YouTube channel, Johnite 16. However, it was, in it was community medicine that taught us to ask the important questions, and where we were confronted as to whether we were flow moppers or tap turners. A question our friends in the girls' hostel retorted with the comment that there was an acute water shortage in the hostel and that there was no water to begin with, and that that was the first order of business. In our final year, we were thrust into the clinical realms where we en encountered a humongous load of information, be it through those immortal Microsoft Teams sessions we diligently logged into and from which some of us have still yet to log out of, or those last-minute clinics cr uh, crash course, it was that unifying concept of te teamwork that, uh, that we encountered across all departments that has stood, a test, that stood the test of time. And it is this very core pr principle of teamwork that has carried us to where we stand uh, today. Whether it was Freshers Day, where despite our diversity, we put up a memorable spectacle, the changes we brought about in presenting a u unified and uh, persistent front, the girls' dietary deserving special mention, the tremendous efforts we uh, invested in conducting events like Autumn and TED, uh, TEDx SGMC, despite the countless hurdles we encountered, and perhaps most importantly, teamwork in the quality of care we provided as we serve those patients who entrust us with their lives. In many ways, our, uh, our college lawns, they serve as a symbol of our own growth on this campus. You see, with every change in its landscape, we too have morphed, be it in our physiques, our characters, or in the hair we lost, gained, and colored. And with the growth of its myriad exotic flowers, bushes, and even those artificial cranes, we are reminded of the skills we acquired in our tenure here at John's. In all seriousness, though, we face many a battle during our stay here. And now, here we stand, seasoned by our scars and molded by our defeats. And now we face the most formidable obstacle yet, re uh, retrieving our respective documents and getting our KMC numbers. Oh, though some may argue that the journey ahead as a doctor may prove a far more daunting task. The convocation list preceding my remarks pronounced the names of 150 newly ordained doctors. And while that's what may, our degrees may read, the reality is that we share these degrees with countless others who voyage with us through the murky waters of MBBS. I therefore take this occasion to thank all those without whom we wouldn't be here, suited and sarried up, clad in gowns and tasseled hats. I thank the Lord Almighty for the blessing that is my batch, and all the graces that we've received throughout our, our course. I thank the management, right from the previous uh, management under Father Dooming Dias and uh, Dr. Srinivasan to the current management un under Father Charles and Dr. George D'Souza for supporting us and encouraging our every endeavor. I thank and pray for all our patients who served as our living textbooks amidst the, their times of distress and peril and who continue to inspire us to better ourselves as clinicians our parents, relatives, superiors, and well-wishers, who stood, us with, stood by us through every step of the way, who treated us with unconditional care and understanding. We honestly would not be here without you. I thank the hands and minds that orchestrated our learning, our dear professors, guides who've shown us the way, and companions who've accompanied us every step of this journey. Our seniors, who nurtured us in the Johnite spirit and who continue to do so even as they traverse their own respective paths. Our juniors, all the way up to the batch of 2020, who brought out the teachers in us and who helped us in our every endeavor all the way up to living today. Our nurses, aides, and support staff, who made our life here in John's memorable and who in, in, educated us on the intricacies of patient care. To the graduating ga batch of PGs and fellows, we congratulate you on this immense milestone that you have achieved. You are our inspiration and a reminder of the exciting journey that lies ahead. And finally, to my batch of 2016. At this juncture, I am reminded of the words of one of my favorite poets, Sarah Kim. 
every great story has a beginning, a middle, and an end, not necessarily in that order. Over half a decade ago, we were inducted into this Johnite heritage, mere children, thrilled yet terrified over the journey that lay ahead of us. And today, I, when I look down from this podium, my heart swells with pride as I see impassioned physicians, charismatic pediatricians, disciplined surgeons, and seasoned researchers. I've had the privilege of sharing the so-called good old days with. Six years ago, the number 2016 was merely an academic year. Today, 2016 is an identity, etched in every single one of our hearts, and so with confidence I say that this isn't the end, but merely a new beginning for us as a batch. And as we approach the credit scene, this epic biopic I've had the privilege of being a part of with all of you, with all its ups and downs, with surprises springing out at every avenue, I dare quote or sing in the likeness of Sinatra. And now the end is near, and so we face that final curtain. My friends, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case of which I'm certain. We've lived lives that are full. We've traveled each and every highway and more. Much more than this, we did it our way. For one last time, this is Dr. Mark Ryan D'Souza signing out. Thank you, Dr. Mark, for those deeply felt words. I now request Dr. Anuradha Anantamurthy, Vice Dean of Undergraduate Studies, and professor in the Department of Pathology to propose the vote of thanks. Dr. Kaveri Namvisan, the chief guest of the day, Your Excellency Most Reverend Sebastian Adiantara, Director of St. John's National Academy of Health Sciences, Dr. Paul Parataram, Dean Dr. George de Souza, and other executives on stage, students, parents, guardians, and faculty. As we come to the end of today's ceremony, it is my privilege and honor to propose the vote of thanks at this uh, juncture. On behalf of the management, faculty, and students, I would like to thank Dr. Kaveri Nambison for accepting our invitation to be the chief guest today and for her inspiring speech. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Nambison's life has been an inspiration to many of us and it is an honor to have her with us today and speak to our young graduates. Thank you, ma'am. Ma May I now request our director, Father Paul Parataram, to hand over a memento to Dr. Nambison. Thank you, Father. I would like to thank I would like to thank His Excellency, Most Reverend Sebastian Adiantarat, for his presence here on this occasion and giving the presidential address. Thank you, Your Excellency. I also thank him for having launched a new website. May I now request the Associate Director of Finance, Father Jesudas Rajamanikam, to present a memento to His Excellency as a token of our gratitude. I would like to place on record my gratitude to the management of St. John's, especially Director Father Paul Parataram, the Dean Dr. George D'Souza, Associate Directors of College, Hospital and Finance for their stewardship, support and guidance. I would also like to extend my gratitude to the Dean of St. John's Research Institute, Principal College of Nursing, Registrar and Assistant Registrar, Chiefs of Medical and Nursing Services, and all the Vice Deans for gracing this occasion. Congratulations and thanks to all the graduating students, MBBS, MD, and PhD, and their parents and guardians, superiors of the congregations, family members, and friends 
who are present here today and those who are watching this event online. Thank you. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to all the heads of departments and faculty who have assembled here to witness and participate in the graduation of their beloved students. The academic section headed by Mr. Roshan Narona deserves a big round of applause for its hard work, for the hard work behind the scene in preparing for an event like this and also for its support and help today. The Masters of Ceremony, Dr. Jayakumari and Dr. Saumya Kaimal also deserve a big round of applause for doing a wonderful job. I owe special gratitude to Dr. Shakuntala Murthy and Dr. Harshad who presented the graduates and Dr. Ashok who administered the oath. I must also mention here a graduating student, Dr. Mark Ryan de Souza, for his student response and also the song. Thank you. I would be failing in my duty if I don't express my gratitude to all the committees, faculty members and student volunteers who have worked very hard to make this function a success. Thank you. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to thank all the members of the media for covering this event, the IT department for its support, staff of the maintenance and estate sections and all the security personnel under the leadership of Mr. Vincent Shantakumar for lending their help and assistance. Thank you all once again. Thank you all once again for being a wonderful audience and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anuradha. We have almost come to the end of this celebration. And a couple of announcements before we wind up. Uh, after the national anthem is played, we request all of you to remain standing for the recessional procession. The recessional procession will begin with the executives, followed by the faculties, followed by the PhD scholars, the DM and the MCH super specialty graduates, the MD and the MS postgraduates, and finally, the newly crowned batch of 2016. And as a part of this celebration, ladies and gentlemen, there are some interesting beverages being arranged outside, namely, of course, coffee and tea. Kindly do join in. Kindly rise for the national anthem. Check, check. students once again we are not bidding you goodbye we are asking you to remain connected as alumni of this prestigious institution can we have the music please as we are going to begin the recessional procession <laughs> <laughs>